Hold on. And after a two-week hiatus, I am back as your host. I'm Tyler Feldman here with your week five pregame pick'em show presented by Burns Tires. To my right, I have Greg, Connor, and Ryan. Normally, we have 10 games a night. Tonight, we only have eight. Uh, sports look in Moose, not happening. Lob versus the Throne, not happening. But we also have eight games that are happening. So going right into it, the most exciting game of the night, without a doubt, No Limit versus Stranger Danger at 6 o'clock on court one. Mm -hmm. I'm not biased. That is by far the best game. <laughs> Uh, we have set the line at no limit as minus 12 against Stranger Danger. Let's, we know the formula. Let's just go down the line. What do we think? Uh, Break my heart. I'm going no limit. I'm of course sorry, you Tyler, are. Of course you are. I just can't pick against them. Yeah, I'm going no limit, too. Just too powerful of a team. Yeah, no limit. <laughs> Would you care to expound on why you hate me so much? I don't hate you. It's, it's, it's the game of the week if you're looking for a blowout. No limit has the most steals in the league. And you look at Stranger Danger last week. Turnover they had 16 happy. 16 turnovers. They were a mess in the midcourt, and a team like No Limit's going to jump all over that. And throw in the fact that they're the second highest scoring team in the league, that's going to. That's big trouble for Stranger Danger. Stranger Danger. I think Howie Miller's going to have a big game from beyond the arc. You don't think Tyler Feldman's going to have a big game? <laughs> for him, yeah, he might drop six. Ooh. <laughs> you heard it first. He might drop six. Um, now, going from my game of the night to the actual game of the night, we have Flint and the Monstars. Kind of hard to de determine a line for this game. Of course, uh, Flint had their first loss this season last week against a good Moose team. We set the line at minus two and a half in the favor of the Monstars. What do we think? I'm going to go Monstars in a close one. I just think their experience and play of Lynx and Brothers is too much. I'm not saying the Monstars will lose, but with the points, I like Flint because I do think it will be a game that's decided by one bucket, so I'm taking the points with Flint. Okay. I'm going to take Flint, too. I think they come out angry after that loss. And I'll go into it again. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit more. It's, it's, it's going to be a bounce-back game for them. Team Moose is a really good defensive team, but Flint really also didn't do themselves any favors last right. week. They missed a lot of shots. And Mike Mazzuto was their only good shooter. He dropped 20-plus, and no one else on their team had more than four. So I definitely think that's going to change tonight. It's going to be a really tough game, but um, the Tropics have actually out-rebounded the Monstars this year. So it'll be a good battle on the boards, better than people think. So I think it'll come down to shooting, and the Tropics will be much hotter from the perimeter than last week. Okay. And i got to say, I love this next matchup because anytime you go into a, a week where there's a team that's never lost and they're playing Run TMC, that's a good formula <laughs> in my mind. We have the Brotherhood taking on Run TMC tonight. We set the line at Brotherhood minus 18. I love it. We got an 18-point blowout. Do we think that it's going to be that big of a blowout? Do we think that Run TMC has a shot? Yeah. I mean, Run TMC might have a shot, but I'm, I'm going with the Brotherhood. Yeah, Run TMC is not a team that you normally see getting 18 points on a spreadsheet. And as good as the Brotherhood has been, I can't deny 18 points. I'm taking TMC with the points. I'm going to take Brotherhood. might not be astronomically higher than what the spread is, but I can see them winning by 20. Now, Greg, we saw last week where TMC added Quincy McKnight, and we know for the Brotherhood, no Jonathan Robles tonight. Do we think that that might play a little bit of a factor? Well, I mean, Mike Davis and Russ Payton this year are averaging 52 points a game combined, and they're both shooting over 65% from the field. So, I honestly, if TMC is going to pull out this victory, I think they need a big game from John Rulin from behind the three-point line. I think sure. he really needs to step it up. Uh, Quincy will do his thing. He provided a huge spark last week, but I really think even without Royal Blaze, Mike Davis and Rush Payton are just going to be way too much for TMC. Okay. Um, we got a little bit of an interesting next matchup. Two teams that are sort of on the bottom of the barrel in terms of the power rankings, but someone's got to come out of this game a winner. We have Fry Time and Flight Club, uh, the average age on that team being about 14. Um, <laughs> we set this as a pick 'em because we, we sort of don't know. We got the bottom two teams in the power rankings. Of course, Flight Club scored the most points ever against the Brotherhood while shooting 42 of 47 or something absurd like that. But again, it was against the yeah. Brotherhood. How much did they really have to try? What do we think here? Who's going to come out on top? I got Flight Club. I just I, I don't know what it is about their team. I just trust them. Yeah, I'm going with Flight Club as well on this one. Me too, but tentative that their crowd shows up. I know it's a holiday weekend. True, true, very true. So what do the young guys have to do to sort of set themselves apart tonight, Connor? Yeah, well, I think with the, the really balanced teams, so I'm really just trying to see which team has the standout player that can really carry his team to the next sure. level. 
And for me, it's uh, Brandon Guitard on um, the flight the flight club. I think he's the, obviously the best player on the team. He's averaging 20.6 points per game, which now that we're four weeks in, these point averages actually you know tell a story course, now. Yeah. So 6.3 rebounds a game as well, and he's also you know their main ball handler, so a guard that leading his team in rebounds. So I think that's really impressive. I think he's going to be the guy that carries his team past the prime time tonight. Okay, moving right along, we have Redemption in Goon. Of course, Goon had the short bench last week. They only had four, and it appears that they might only have four again tonight. Playing against a Redemption team that's sort of short-staffed again this week, fighting some injuries as well. And we set the line at minus eight in favor of Redemption. Sort of an interesting matchup, though. It's always tough when you have the short bench to sort of bounce back, even though we know that Goon has a lot of talent. It's sort of hard, you know, that the rest of the teams are showing up mm -hmm. two weeks in a row. So uh, what do you think? I'm going to go Redemption. I, Goon squads have experienced, good team. They just have to prove it to me. Yeah, same, I agree with Greg. Just championship caliber level of Redemption from last year. I think that's enough to pick them in this game. I'm also going to go Redemption. Goon squad struggled without a bench last week. So, so what do you think Goon has to do to even make this one interesting with the short bench? Well, I mean, they have Matt Marconi. They need him to that's have a start. huge game. Uh, Brandon Massaro. Those two players, they need to step up. They go as they go. And you know, with Goon Squad, they're never the most explosive team you're going to see, but when they play their brand of basketball, it's very hard to beat, and especially against a team like Redemption. I think they match up very well, but, I mean, they definitely need to neutralize Scott Kochar running the point, or else they'll just Absolutely. they'll have trouble with him. Okay, so now four weeks in, this being week five, things starting to click for Central Chocolate a little bit. Carmine is rolling, Tyron's rolling. We have untouchables against Central Chocolate. We set this at minus 15 in favor of Central do we think Carmine's going to slow down at all? I don't think so. Central? Yeah, I don't think so either. I'm also picking Central. Yeah, they'll keep rolling Central chocolate. So what, besides Carmine, what's been working well so far for Central? That's a good question, Ty, because whenever we talk about Central chocolate, it's getting a little bit redundant talking about Carmine all the time, for right? For five seasons now. Exactly. <laughs> so um, even Aaron Samuel, who's you know another star player on that team. So I'm going to talk about Javon Spinks, who's came the last two weeks. And he's added a different element to their team. You know, like we just said, Aaron and Carmine always, you know, ball dominant guards who, you know, slash and shoot from the outside very well. But Javon adds a big man element to their offense who can bang it down low in the post. And he's got some finesse game as well. He can shoot it a little bit. And he's, he's agile with the ball in his hands. He's pretty athletic for a big man. So I think he just gives their, and Tyron also is also another good big man down low. So I think them just, you know, making their offense a little bit more diverse now. Sure. Um, I think you know they're going to be a tough team to beat. I see them picking up their third win in a row this week. Okay, and maybe one of the more interesting matchups from last week. Maybe the final score doesn't tell the whole story, but double dribblers took run TMC down to the wire for yeah. the most part. They were right there with them for three quarters of that game, and then of course in the fourth quarter TMC sort of opened it up. But Joey will tell you otherwise. Oh, new player had to get used <laughs> to the system. But let's not take away from what the double dribblers did. And they added a couple pieces. They came out last week and they played pretty good basketball. We actually have them favored tonight against STP at two and a half, maybe a bucket difference here. Um, what do we think? I'm gonna go double dribblers. They're they're a new addition. Just impressed me. Yeah, I'm also gonna pick double dribblers. I think that they're looking new and improved. Never thought this would be the case two weeks ago, but unanimous. I'm going double dribblers too. What's the difference? What's changed in a week? Bernard Brantley, or it, what are we calling? Shooty, shooty, shooty. 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 <laughs> he, he can shoot. He uh, he really made his himself known, and he's about to make himself known to this league, and really step up as a star. And SCP looked really good last week, but as we mentioned, that was a really depleted goon squad team. And um, I also think Jesse Doucette will get a little hot from three tonight, and they'll win a close game by five or six. All right. And, of course, this brings us down to our last matchup. And much like last year, Lob 203 had a really tough schedule. It looks like this year it's sometimes why, who every week they have to play a top-five team. Maybe a little bit off the hook tonight against a bad boys team, which is good, but not one of those top powerhouse teams in this league. I don't know if necessarily we think sometimes why is going to win this game, but this might be a game where they're looking at it on their schedule and thinking, well, we got to get up for this one. This isn't no limit. This isn't brotherhood we might be able to do something here. We set it at minus 20 in favor of the bad boys. Maybe a little bit disrespectful, but what do we think? Can sometimes why at least make this one interesting? I personally think so. I'm going bad boys. Yeah, I feel bad for sometimes why. Like you said, a kind of a winnable game, but bad boys just had such a tough loss last week that I think they come out so hungry today that it's going to power them past sometimes why. I had bad boys, but your little prelude there kind of swayed me. They've played really tough teams, and I think they'll lose by maybe 17 or 18, but I'll take sometimes why to cover. Okay. 
a little extra here? Uh, I just think Jalen Edelson really stepped up last week. I really love him as a leader of that team. Uh, Matt Shannon, I mean, he's averaging nine points and five rebounds, which might not seem like a lot, but, I mean, for a bad boys team who needed height, you know, needed down low presence, I mean, I think he, along with Foster, and the new additions with the bad boys, I just really think they've turned a corner. It's very interesting if you look back to like week one where they had the one kid who scored 40 and then no mm -hmm. one else in double digits. He had now, four points last week. Right, last week he had four points and the team has a big win. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's a team that's sort of their roster's filled out. They're sort of coming into their mm -hmm. own. Again, maybe not the worst draw in the world for sometimes why, but not yeah. necessarily an easy one. Um, and like I said, only eight games tonight. No moose sports look, no lob thrown. Um, that pretty much wraps it up. I gotta go get changed. I got a game in about 45-ish. I just looked like I had a watch. That was awesome. Uh, anyways, we will see all of you guys back here at six o'clock as always for our games here right behind us on court one and court two at InSports. For Greg, Connor, and Ryan, I am Tyler. See you guys soon.